Thanks for staying with us. Uh, our last guest was talking about the fact that uh, Nigeria, not mature for state police, according to IGP, should have been like the highest uh, um, headline, but we were saving it for now. And we're going to discuss that now with Mohammed Abdullahi, who is a public relations analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mohammed. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Always my pleasure. Mm. Okay, uh, let's first of all start with the fact that uh, IGP is a Inspector General of Police, but he's appointed by the um, Chief Security Officer, the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, that is the President. And now, everybody seems to be on the same page about um, state police, except the IGP, from the look of things. So, let's start by knowing how much rights the IGP has, how much say does he have in matters such as this that have become almost a political issue? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think in my own opinion, I would say the IG is trying to protect the state. I mean, save his job in terms of uh, the manpower that he controls and the territory that he controls. Remember, state policing decentralized not only the functions of the police, but also even the powers. So when you have state police, it means the chief police officer in Adamawa State, for instance, doesn't require any, and I repeat, doesn't require any authority from the people who still have their IGP in Abuja to carry out some functions. Same thing with Anambara and Oshun State and so on and so forth. So in my own opinion, I was very shocked by the comment of the IGP yesterday during that event because it's like, is going to the toe in toe in opposite direction with his bosses. First, like you mentioned, uh, the president and commander in chief who has given his nod to the National Assembly to carry out possibly uh, possible checks. And then, you know, perhaps even I'm sure there's a deal uh, at the National Assembly at the moment about state policy that they, they are deliberating upon. And secondly, the, the second boss, if you allow me to say that. The police uh, affairs minister, the former governor Gaidam, who was at the same event and mentioned that uh, the country is moving in the right direction of, uh, you know, going towards uh, institutionalizing state police, which we had before, perhaps in the first republic and so on, before the um, military took over power and then uh, changed everything. Uh, so, for me, I think, in my opinion, I think. Uh, the, the, the IGP in this sense is just trying to put its territory, like I mentioned. Like I said earlier, if you have state police, it means perhaps even the manpower that we have for the federal police at the moment will be reduced. It means the chain of command definitely will be reduced, and so on and so forth. And when you have all this reduction, it means a whole lot of revenues in terms of budgeting will definitely be reduced. So. Uh, in my own, this is my opinion. So I think the statement of uh, the, the, the IGT, for me, uh, is more of a fact that he's just trying to protect his own angle of the job without necessarily looking at uh, the welfare or the uh, security welfare of the latter Nigerian masses. Because seriously, at this juncture in Nigeria, nothing is like uh, we are not right for state police. If we are talking about uh, what happens? Uh, we are perhaps we are scared that politicians will hijack the situation for their own benefit. But they already do this, even with the federal police. I don't want to mention names, but there are so many situations. We have, uh, for instance, even someone who is not a political person, uh, you know, companies using the state police to harass consumers and so on. The story went viral some few since last year, and even international media took it up. You understand? And so many instances like that where even the police have been used to harass individuals, companies, and so on and so forth. So it's not a new thing. But I think what is paramount that we should think about or, you know, be of utmost importance for every Nigerian is the fact that whatever we are scared of, that whether politicians or individuals will use the state police for, is not as worse as Nigerians being killed in every nook and credit of this country. That, that is not as worse. You understand? So, if we are scared that politicians or whosoever will, uh, you know, politicize state police, use it for their own benefit, is it as worse as being Nigerians being killed every now and then? You know, I think it's that, that for the security of life and property should come first. 
before any other thing that we are considering. Mm. Well, if it's going to reduce a lot of things, uh, I'm sure the, the IGP salary will not reduce. Uh, I don't know why he's scared. Uh, but that's just, by the way, that's just uh, on the funny side of it. But uh, I, I would really like to have a peep into this bill to see what becomes of the, uh, the police force uh, when state police comes up. Because the federal police will just be there. Will they be uh, having a function like the FBI in America, or will they just be police uh, mixing with the people in the states, or will they just be in offices? I I'd like to know what will become of that. But he did express some, some doubts. He talks, he talks about uh, the fact that uh, governors are going to hijack this, politicians are going to hijack this, just like you, you mentioned a little bit more. But um, do you think there's any kind of credibility in his, uh, in his fears? I don't think so. I don't think so. My, 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 my own thinking as a Nigerian, first and foremost, is the security of life and properties. Every other thing comes in. And in fact, this is the number one job of every reasonable and rational government all over the world, securing people's lives and properties. So every other thing comes in. You know, because for instance, this, the, the system we operate in now, you know, uh, the federal police that we have in now. For instance, we have property state commissioners of police, they will be used, posted to vicinities and communities where they have no clue. They have, you know, I mean, in terms of languages, in terms of even the, the road map, and so on and so forth. So it's very difficult for them to carry out the uh, function of policing. For the fact that even traditional rulers have been stripped of all their political duties in this country. You know, so it's, it's, it's very difficult. So how do we now make sure that we ensure at least some form of security in our villages, in our nook and crannies, beyond the urban cities? You know, because the majority of Nigerians still reside uh, in, 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 in these uh, villages and communities. You know, you understand that we, we just hear that government strike and the next thing is uh, uh, you know, it's, it's for either the IGP to visit the state governor, blah, blah, blah. We will look into this. It won't happen again. But before you know, after another month, we hear another strike in another village and so on and so forth. So this shouldn't continue. I think they will have state police. You understand? You understand the new and crannies of their various communities. This will greatly reduce. In fact, you look at uh, a typical example in the Northeast, for instance. With the advent of the vigilantes, who understand, you know, the ter their territories, who understand, you know, their various communities and even the route map there. This issue of Boko Haram, uh, uh, like five, six, seven years ago, where they just come out, kill people, hijack people, bomb places, has greatly reduced because the vigilantes are providing the relevant information uh, for, for either the the armed forces and so on and so forth, you know, in order to curtail the security issues. So I think this is the way to go for Nigeria. The fears, I don't see any fear. There. Definitely, whatever uh, uh, route we take, whether it's the federal police that we are using now, like I mentioned earlier, there has been issues of manipulation all over the, all over the place, all over the years. The power, the powerful guys have been using the police to oppress people uh, who are not as powerful as them. So we won't move out that case. But what we should concentrate on is the fact that state police will give us more in terms of security of the lives of Nigerians. Okay, you just mentioned the fact that vigilantes are, have been doing a lot, especially like in the northeast, and we can find them also in the southwest here, the Amoteku and all that. Uh, but um, some people are saying when the state police comes, these vigilantes should be converted to state police. But these people are... Uh, uh, having as members of these groups some of them are retired army army people some of them are retired police some of them are gone past the age where in the nigerian society you can be given employment and all that even though they are doing a good job so would you recommend this that they just change for instance their motekun into state police and recruit more or would you say there should be a fresh uh, recruitment and then the, the vigilantes should still uh, function? No, it depends. It depends now. It depends on the capabilities in terms of revenue of, of each state. You understand? Because you, you can't have too much security. You understand? Well, it depends on your pocket. You know, you know how much billions of dollars, for, for instance, the U.S. spend every year 
on uh, budget in terms of security and so on and so forth because they want to be safe. You know, so it depends. Your question is really, it depends. Yeah, for instance, if I will answer that directly, for me, the Amatekuns, perhaps, yes, are doing wonderfully well, you know, in terms of securing some of the Southwest states and so on and so forth. And they've been recording a lot of success and so on and so forth. So perhaps what they should do, in my own opinion, is perhaps use a template, replicate such templates, you know, use such templates to train. Uh, and then, like you already mentioned, because this, so, most of them are not just uh, civilians like you and I. Some of them are retired colonel in Nigerian army. Some of them are retired police video, retired deputy IGs here and there. So they've garnered this experience all over, uh, over the years. So it's good that perhaps they could be used to train. Uh, and they could ultimately, depending on their budget, uh, metamorphose into the state police. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's a big deal. What I think is very important is that your job is to secure lives and properties. However, you want to do it, that is legal. Yeah, please do it. Uh, so it depends on the state in this in this case, uh, depending on their pocket as well. I mean, depending on their budget to see what is feasible for them. Uh, because very many, very many of the states in Nigeria are still yet to introduce the big data. Uh, perhaps maybe the security challenges is not all over the, all over the country. That like we have maybe in some pockets in the southwest, majorly in northeast and northwest. Uh, even you remember in Katsina State, I think late last year or early this year, there was an uh, introduction of uh, a new security outfit as well. So, yeah, uh, depending on the state, they can actually metamorphose outrightly into the state police if the law is passed or they become like a trading arm or a collaboratory uh, partners for, 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 for them to work together. So, uh, it depends on the state, uh, and I think each state will uh, do what's needed for them. Okay. Uh, well, we have just one more minute, and so I'd like to uh, use that to ask you to say one, one, uh, some things that you would like to recommend. You know, if the state police has to happen, um, maybe something you fear that should not be there, or something you think that should be added to state police to make it function well. We have just one minute, please. So I think um, for the state police, I think what has been uh, challenging is the fact that in our constitution we have things like uh, security vote for either the governor or the president which to some extent is unaccountable for uh, i think these are some of the things that we should look at in, in, in when we have state policing for instance to say in order to have more such money that we that we, that we vote for security vote for the either the president or the governors that are unaccountable for should be challenged towards this uh kind of output i mean state policing in order to have uh, more revenue to execute their action, and then they will be accountable. Not like the system that we have now, that whether you give one billion to any government, uh, the constitution says you can't ask him or her what he used the money for. I think uh, these are this is a particular thing that I would like to see change. Okay, I would, would like to thank you, Mohammed Abdullahi, for your thoughts this morning. Thank you so much for coming to our program. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Okay, we've had on the program here Mohammed Abdullahi, a public relations analyst. We're talking about uh, state police and the comment of the IGP, which is that Nigeria is not mature enough. So he was giving his own thoughts. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, but our Nigeria must work and we must be secure. Uh, we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll take a second hot topic. I did say that today is mostly security. Stay with us. <music>